electronic markets are online sites where people and businesses can trade. They have great potential in reducing the costs of search, negotiation and transaction. Those are the words of our guest today on Inside Business, Dr. Iyad Rahwan, who is a lecturer in the Faculty of uh, Informatics at the British University here in Dubai. Well, as the global credit crisis intensifies, businesses need to be more clever in the way that they use information technology. Dr. Iyad, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Now, what did you exactly mean by that, uh, that quote? Well, uh, I was uh, just uh, giving an example of how uh, information technology can help uh, make business more efficient, uh, which is particularly relevant uh, in the current crisis. So, uh, for example, uh, as you know, businesses uh, put in a lot of cost, a lot of money and, res and time and resources into negotiating business deals with suppliers. Uh, so, in any way, you can uh, improve this process by making it more efficient, more streamlined, quicker, cheaper. Uh, you could definitely uh, save a lot and uh, become more competitive in the market. You know, some of these companies, are they aware of the potential and possibly not aware of the, the lack of business they could actually be doing and utilizing? I think a lot of business, actually one of the problems with uh, adopting electronic commerce in the business-to-business -business, uh, area is because people still don't trust the technology or find it too intimidating or too complicated. But as technology improves, uh, actually transacting online becomes easier and easier. Um, also, another issue is, is trust. You know, some people f feel that perhaps if I negotiate online, I may not be able to get the, the good deal that I, that I want. But what they don't realize often is that uh, in an online market, you have uh, access to far more suppliers than you can by making phone calls or meeting people uh, face to face. Uh, you, can, you may be able to trade with people in China or in Europe. Uh, and they are just a click away. With the global credit crisis, I mean, often these, these companies are now letting staff go. Um, the last thing on their mind, in a sense, is developing their IT um, section or department. Is that, is that wrong, do you think? Of course, uh, understandably, when things are tough, people have a knee-jerk reaction to, to, to the difficulties. So they just want to cut down costs. And that's not necessarily in the best interest of these companies in the longer term. So uh, when you lay off people, of course, you are uh, reducing the expenses, uh, which means that maybe you won't have deficit this year. But in the long run, you, are, you, are probably, you may be less competitive in the market. You've lost your talent and so on. So uh, in my view, a better solution is to actually retrain your people and maybe get them uh, uh, to start working on research and development. In other words, get people who can develop new technologies, new processes, improvements in, in, uh, in the way you offer your services to become more competitive in the market and be able to be one of the survivors through this crisis. We hear a lot about this research and, and development. I mean, in what way at the, the university are you pushing this, this message forward? Uh, we have a, an Emirati student who recently graduated uh, uh, under uh, my supervision and the supervision of Dr. Sharif Abdullah. Um, and she suggested in her uh, master's thesis a way in which uh, taxi dispatch can actually become more efficient. So uh, as you know, uh, it takes a lot of time sometimes to, uh, to wait for a taxi when, after you've made your call. So any improvement of that is a significant improvement in, uh, in the service you provide to your uh, customers. It will uh, allow you to, to utilize your resources, taxi time, more efficiently and in the long term make more money. So that's just an example of how clever R&D can actually help uh, solve real world problems, make things more efficient, and in the end help you survive the, the crisis. Do you think that you know, IT has sort of reached a sort of saturation point? Um, it's, it's now no longer sort of gelling with people. It's, it's this blur out there at the moment. I don't really th I, uh, think so because, and, and for a very good reason, um, IT is an innovation driven industry which means that a new uh, income stream or revenue streams actually come with new technologies rather quickly. So, for example, no one, before the internet, no one knew what, how, how we could make money in such, using such a medium. But then as soon as internet came, people started coming up with online networking sites, uh, online trading sites, chat, voice over IP, and what have you. So all of these things have come out of innovation. So we actually... I don't think we're saturated because we haven't yet exploited the, ed the, you know, the extreme of this technology. And what do you think are going to be the major advances that you're hearing about um, you know, being in the research and development 
uh, you know, sort of a section. You, you're hearing about a lot of innovation. Well, um, I, personally, my research area is uh, artificial intelligence. And when people hear about AI, they, they only think about robots taking over the world and movies like The Matrix and, and so on. But uh, actually, artificial intelligence is a technology that is uh, becoming more and more useful in our daily lives. Uh, in fact, I think the estimate, estimated uh, size of the AI-based industry in the U.S. is 21 billion uh, in 2007. Uh, within, by 2015, they expect AI to contribute $200 billion to the, to the economy. And uh, to give you examples, uh, it's not only about robots, but it's about any sort of smart or intelligent system. So an example is uh, when you are uh, you're working in the, in the finance and banking industry, uh, you want to detect if there is any fraud or any kind of fishy activity happening in the market. AI can, can churn through all this data and identify any uh, patterns which, uh, which may be uh, interesting or you may want to look at, which may be suspicious. Great. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the program today, Dr. Iyad Rahman. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for coming in. Thank you. Well, there we are. That's it for this edition of Inside Business. You can contact the program, as ever, by writing to us directly at ib at city7tv.com. But for now, from all of us on this edition of the program, goodbye and thanks for watching.